In this question, we must determine the value of x. Now before we examine each statement, let's see what we can learn about the value of x from the given equation. So first, let's expand the left-hand side here. Notice that since we have an x squared term in this equation, we might be dealing with a quadratic. So let's set our equation equal to 0. From here, we can rearrange the terms so that the terms with k are together. And now let's move our equation over here. At this point, let's see what happens if we try factoring the left-hand side in groups. So first, we can factor x squared minus 1 as x minus 1 times x plus 1. And next, we can factor negative kx minus k as negative k times x plus 1. At this point, notice that we have x plus 1 in two places. So we can combine these to get the following. Now, if you are having a hard time understanding how we can combine these terms, please notice that this is no different from taking 5x minus 2x and combining the terms to get 5 minus 2 times x or taking 5x minus kx and combining them to get 5 minus k times x. Now from here, please notice that we have something times something equals 0. This means that either the first something equals 0 or the second something equals 0. Now if x minus 1 minus k equals 0, then we can solve this equation for x to get x equals k plus 1, and if x plus 1 equals 0, then x must equal negative 1. So from the given equation, we see that x could equal k plus 1, or it could equal negative 1. Notice that one solution here depends on the value of k, and the other solution does not depend on the value of k. This is very important to answering the question. Okay, now that we have summarized the given information, it will be much easier to examine the two statements. Let's begin with statement 1. At the same time, let's list our possible values of x. Now we already know that negative 1 is one possible value for x. So our primary goal here is to determine whether statement 1 yields yet another value for x or simply confirms that negative 1 is the one and only value for x. Now if x is less than k, then if we subtract k from both sides, we get x minus k is less than 0. Notice that if we take the second possible value of x here and subtract k from both sides, we get x minus k equals 1. So statement 1 tells us that x minus k is less than 0, but this possible solution here tells us that x minus k equals 1. Well, if statement 1 is true, which it is, then x minus k cannot equal 1, in which case this one solution is not possible. This leaves us with only one possible value for x. x must equal negative 1. So as such, statement 1 must be sufficient. Now on to statement 2. Once again, we'll list the two possible values of x, where negative 1 is one possible value for x. Now before we check our second possible value of x, let's take this equation and solve it for k to get k equals 3 minus x. Now that we have an equivalent expression for k, we can take the second possible value of x here and replace k with 3 minus x. To solve this for x, we will simplify the right-hand side, then we'll add x to both sides, and then we'll divide both sides by 2 to get x equals 2. So 2 is one possible value for x, and we already know that negative 1 is another possible value for x. So since we cannot determine the value of x with any certainty, statement 2 is not sufficient, which means the answer here is A.